Traders War Room wants to thank the viewer for their continued support on this journey. Please take a look at the description for an overview of video content, also some research topics, and some options for online brokers. What is up team? Chuck with Traders War Room back at you with another video from the field. Listen, there are no excuses to be making money. This video is jam packed with a lot of information that I think you'll find helpful. Specifically, we're gonna talk about planning and the pros and cons of the stock market. Listen, here at Traders War Room, you already know that we look at the stock market as a war zone. Stocks and sectors, those are our battles. It's our job to attack, destroy, and conquer each and every battle every day. We do it as a team, so I need you to like, I need you to share, I need you to subscribe, I need you to join the Facebook. Check the description out for a full overview of what the video is about and the resources that I'm going to be talking about. And if you're ready, follow me. Let's go to war. Traders War Room reminds the viewer that this channel and content on the channel is for entertainment and education purposes only. Hey team, was going over the video. Notice I didn't do the recap of the research and learn over dividends. So real quick, I wanna get this out before I post this video. Sorry about this being a little dark. Remember I'm in the field, so we get what we get, okay? Why dividend stocks? Okay, one, they help protect our wealth from inflation better than other assets, such as like bonds or some other things, all right? So that's one thing. Number two, when we're looking for these dividend stocks, we wanna look for stocks that have an annual yield of five to 7%, okay? Yes, 10 to 15%, higher is better, give us better returns possibly, but we gotta remember those are risky stocks because the earnings report might be lower because they're giving so much more money out in percentages and they're more volatile, okay? Which brings me to the next thing. We want good growth trajectory of these stocks, okay? Five years standard of growth is a pretty good start for when you're looking for stocks to invest for dividend growth. And finally, we want stocks for dividends that'll be relevant in the future, okay? We don't want the trendy stock now that'll be gone in a year, okay? We want stuff that'll be 5, 10, 15 years down the road, still growing, still giving us returns, still making us money, okay? Welcome back, team. So let's get into our fundamental lesson, planning, specifically pros and cons of the stock market. Listen, everybody needs a plan when they join in into the stock market, okay? Why I join may not be the reason that you join. Or what I find a pro in joining, you might find a con. It's our job to look at pros and cons and decide if it's the right move for us, okay? I've outlined a couple pros and cons that I think kind of hit on everybody's part. So number one pro, why we get in the stock market. We look at an opportunity to make money, okay? Quicker than just a paycheck and working 40 hours a week at some job, all right? There's opportunity everywhere. You see the supernovas go up. You think, man, if I would have got in at Amazon at $7 a share, look at Amazon now, over $3,000, all right? The money potential is there. Sometimes quickly, sometimes over time. But that's one of the main reasons of getting in is making money. Another reason of getting in is liquidity. So if you get invested in two-stay real estate or you buy a house, right? You sell the house, you close the house. It's a long procedure, right? Until you get your money. With stocks, you get in and you get out and that money is yours. BNGO the other day, right? Rode up, you know, from $3 to $7. I sold out all that profit. That's mine. I can cash out. Yes, it takes some time to get from the stock market brokerage to my bank, but it's there. It's mine, all right? Or I can utilize it to jump into another investment and hopefully make some more money, keep it going. So when we're talking about liquidity, that's another reason why people get involved in the stock market. And finally, is having control over where your money goes. So if I invest in one thing, then... That is all I'm invested in, making money or not making money. But with the stock market, I can invest in 
five or six different things, all hopefully making money, but counterbalancing each other. Some making money, some not, but I'm choosing the products that I want to get in or the businesses that I want to get in. So we have the choice. But listen, the stock market is not just all sunshines and rainbows. There's a lot of cons associated with it that you need to make sure that your risk tolerance is ready for it. One con, one big con is it the volatility, okay? The market can be up one day and drastically down the next day. And it can shift from one day to the next. So you can be making money and losing money, making money and losing money. And some people don't like it when there's some unpredictability towards their money. Another thing, as we've seen it, market crash, okay? You get all your eggs in one basket, your money's all tied up in the stock market, and the market crashes, boom, all that money gone, potentially. Now, sometimes if you sell out, once you sell out at a low, that money's gone. But some people hold on, market rec recovers, it may not be such a bad blow. But we've seen a few times market crashing, and it definitely affected people in a negative response, especially with their money. So that's always a con that you need to think of. And one final con is risk tolerance. Listen, the stock market, everything we're talking about is risk, okay? If you are risk adverse, the stock market, it may not be for you, but you need to develop a tolerance of risk. You can't be emotionally tied to your money that's in the stock market. And I know that's hard, but if you get into the stock market thinking there's no risk involved, you are wrong. You are dead wrong, okay? There's going to be a risk. You have to separate your emotions with your money because it's going to be ups and downs. And you need to make a decision if the stock market is something you want to get into or not get into. So thought-provoking content. So with the surge of renewable energies being number one or number two leading industries recently a lot of the times are they here to stay are these stocks primed to continue to surge on especially with a biden presidency so we've seen fcel we've seen plug we've seen blink we've seen all of these renewable energy sources these that underpin a lot of these electric vehicles and they're booming right now but is this just a hot trend or is this something that we, we continue to see stay for a long term and outperform the market. I'm interested to see what your comments and thoughts are on it. Let me know down below. So for research and learn, today's topic is RSI, Relative Strength Index, okay? This is an indicator that the markets and investors use to see how strong a stock is, okay? Usually the terms are 70 and 30 that you see on the charts. Anything when the stock rises and it's starting to go over 70, it's considered overbought. And if it drops below 30, it's considered oversell. Anything in between there is considered usually like a neutral territory. Sometimes, you know, they use 50 as the wedge, like where it's below 50 starting to trend down and above 50 trending up. So I put in the description, I put a link for RSI. So research and learn is to learn about what RSI tells us about the stocks and how we can utilize it to make good entry and exit points and uh, essentially make us money. All right, team, that's it. Another video down, another week almost over in the stock market, another killer session. Okay, let's keep doing it. We're killing the market. We're growing every day. I'm promoting the crap out of this channel, all right? We need to do this together, okay? Like, share, subscribe, join the Facebook group, leave comments. This gets us the content for the video, okay? This is not just my channel. This is our channel, all right? Let's do this together. Lots of things coming in the near future. Once I'm out of the field, I got plans for this channel, okay? I'm going to hit February running, all right? So I hope you stick with us for that. So in the meantime, if you're ready, follow me. Let's go to war. So let's examine SNDL chart real quick on the top. Notice how the RSI chart on the bottom correlates to the trend of the stock patterns. Here's another one posh. Once again, we're looking at the top chart is the trend of the stock and the bottom chart is the RSI. 
notice where the upper chart is when the RSI dips below 30 and when it goes above 70 and where do they correlate when it's in between 70 and 30.